Now, something different. The SDLP has been told it's resting on its laurels. It's too complacent and too stuck in the past. The critical comments are contained in a confidential report commissioned by the party. The report, which has been obtained exclusively by this programme, also states that many of the nationalist voters it spoke to don't see the SDLP as a party of change or difference. Instead, they see it as a self-interested conservative force. Stephen Walker has this report. Once the SDLP were the leading voice of northern nationalism. They had figures who shaped the political landscape. When John Hume and Seamus Mallon spoke, the establishment in London and Dublin took notice. 1992 marked a high point for the SDLP when at his third attempt, Joe Hendron took the West Belfast Westminster seat from Gerry Adams. Joe Hendron's victory marked a political triumph for the SDLP, but the success in West Belfast was short-lived and at the next election, Gerry Adams recaptured the seat. But from that point on, things started to change. In the 1997 general election, the SDLP outpolled Sinn Féin by around 60,000 votes, but at the last general election in 2010, the tables were turned, with Sinn Féin outpolling the SDLP by around the same number. In an attempt to improve their fortunes, the SDLP has commissioned research amongst voters who don't vote SDLP but are open to vote for the party. Fifty people in five focus groups were questioned in Derry, Antrim, Newry, Oma, Ballygoli and Belfast. The findings for the SDLP are stark. Much of the report is negative. Whilst voters had positive things to say about the past leader John Hume and the party's stance on Syria, the report notes they are few and far between. Some see the SDLP as middle-class time-wasters and not doing much to stop violence around the flags protest. The research also showed that older voters thought the past hangs heavy with Sinn Féin and some thought that party hid behind a mask. Many voters saw Sinn Féin as strong and fighting for them. It's the comparison with Sinn Féin that will give the SDLP their biggest concerns. Those questioned said they thought the SDLP was a party of the past, while Sinn Féin was viewed as a party of the future. The SDLP were perceived as middle class, Sinn Féin working class. Some said the SDLP had no big figures anymore. In turn, Sinn Féin were viewed as having strong leaders fighting for us. The SDLP were seen as not sure if they're Irish or British, while Sinn Féin were viewed as strongly Irish. And on policy differences between Sinn Féin and the SDLP, the report states, no group could identify any policy differences. The, it seemed to be a party that is stuck in the past, that has no clear sense of vision or a clearly articulated project with a leadership that seems bereft of dynamism and a sense of real political and policy direction. The report contains other stark conclusions on the state of the SDLP. It states, many nationalist voters don't know who you are and what you stand for anymore. Another conclusion states, many nationalist voters don't see the SDLP as a party of change, but as a self-interested conservative force. And there is further criticism. Many nationalist voters feel the SDLP is resting on its laurels, looking backwards, is too complacent and too stuck in the past. The report states, nationalist voters want a reason to vote for the SDLP again. So what does the party need to do? This confidential report was completed last month. It makes a series of recommendations. It says the party should build its profile by supporting the leader, Alistair MacDonnell. It says the party should campaign on health issues and should deliver blunt messages on the areas of flags and parades. And it says more women and more younger people should be given positions of real authority in the party. There is also this warning. No matter what the historical significance of the SDLP, without doing something different, future prospects look bleak. So what does something different mean? As a start, should the SDLP leave the executive and go into opposition?
I think that everything in this document speaks very loudly and clear, clearly to the idea that the SDLP should more seriously consider going into opposition and Stormont. That would speak volumes to a community and to a potential electorate who's not quite sure what the party stands for. It stands for, in an opposition, holding the government of the day to account, scrutinising the work of government on a day-to-day -day basis and offering an alternative government in forthcoming elections. Next year's European and Council elections will be Alistair Macdonald's first test as party leader. Some observers say he desperately needs some good results. It's kind of lost and I'm not sure that the current leader is a man who is imaginative enough to plot a new direction and a new agenda for the STLP. And I think come next May, if the STLP performs badly or doesn't make gains uh, in May, then I think Alistair Macdonald's time as leader of the party is probably over. As bad as that? Yeah. I do. In 2011, when Alistair Macdonald campaigned for the SDLP leadership, he said he was not going to watch the decline and eventual disappearance of his party. This report makes it clear that unless radical action is taken, the SDLP's future is bleak.